Greetings, my dear friends. Welcome. Welcome to Chat Simplifies, your channel to simplify complex geopolitical issues into easily understandable nuggets. I am Commander Chakrapani or Chax. In this episode, we will look at India's difficult neighborhood and the Game of Thrones that is going on in some of them. For India, it remains an issue of leadership and for it, that leadership is a throne of thorns. Let's get started. Our neighborhood, like you know, is a mess. Presidents, prime ministers are on their way out. New ones are waiting in the wings. And India has a difficult task of showing leadership. Let's start with Pakistan. A perpetual nuisance. There are many times one thinks, what is better for India? A stable Pakistan or an unstable Pakistan busy with its own internal problems. In Pakistan, the economy is crumbling. Over $80 billion of foreign debt, $23 billion plus of it are owed to just one country, China. China lends money at high interest rates and does not restructure loans. It takes over assets. For example, the Gwadar port. The Karachi port, is it next in the line? Well, only time will tell. Politically, it probably is the most unstable nation around us. Imran Khan has just been ousted, becoming the first Prime Minister in Pakistan to be ousted on the basis of a no-confidence motion. Shehbaz Sharif has taken over, but is barely able to form his government despite one week going down. Yet, Nawaz Sharif continues with his rant of foreign hand, safety of nuclear weapons in Pakistan, pressing for early elections. There is food and water shortages. If this was not enough, sectarian violence, especially violence between the majority Sunni and the rest of the Muslim clan, the Shias, the Ahmadiyas, the Nurbakshis, the Hazaras, et al. In addition, there have been massive explosions that have been taking place, suicide bombings in various Shia and Hazara mosques. If this was not enough, Baluchistan is on fire. Pakhtunistan, Sindh are also raising their head. And surprise, surprise, so is Pak occupied Kashmir. In the middle of all of this, Tehrike Taliban Pakistan and the ISIS Khorasan are getting more and more emboldened and are reviving their activities in this part. In China, COVID is back with the bank. The string, stringent methods that China has been using to control COVID and the zero COVID policy is bringing the people on the brink of madness. Massive unrest is on in Shanghai and many of the other cities which have been locked down. Economic woes have not reduced. Whether it be corporates or it be governments, provincialities, some, they are all defaulting. There have been layoffs and lockouts because of Shanghai lockdown. Yet, China does not believe in letting go its assertive policy externally. It is accelerating its nuclear buildup in Tibet. And its assertiveness is ever rising, whether in Tibet, South China Sea, Senkaku Islands, or Taiwan. In Nepal, political stability seems to be there with Dioba as the Prime Minister. Yet, the communists have been at loggerheads with each other, despite China egging them on. 
Economic woes have started troubling Nepal significantly and its forex reserves are down. So much so that Nepal has banned import of all luxury items because the reserves are at the lowest. In Bangladesh, there seems to be political and economic stability. India has more or less resolved many of the border issues, yet religious extremism, extremism and Islamic terror is on the rise, manifesting itself as Hindu hate. The ISIS and the ISI are active in fermenting Islamic fundamentalism here and there are growing unrest, uneasiness as far as Bangladesh is concerned with respect to what will happen to the illegal Bangladeshis once India starts implementing NRC and CAA. Myanmar is relatively stable with the military junta ruling. The democracy movement is largely quiet. Yet, sanctions are biting and the Rohingya Muslim issue still hangs as far as Myanmar is concerned. Sri Lanka is slowly getting to be the basket case. Struggling to stay afloat, it's effectively broke. So much so that the government has actually defaulted on its loan to various agencies. It is running out of medicines, fuel and food. Over $51 billion in debt, over $8 billion owed to just one country, China. And China, like I said earlier with respect to Pakistan, does not restructure debt, nor does it do anything else. It takes over assets. Hamban Tota has been taken over for 99 years. Will Colombo port be the next? Only time will tell. If economic wars were not enough, you have political instability going on out here. The Rajapakshas are true dynasts out here. The President, the Prime Minister, erstwhile Finance Minister and one Minister of State are all brothers. Three more of their children are waiting as junior ministers or as the Chief of Staff of the Prime Minister. People are not too happy. Gotabaya Rajbaksha actually won the election on the promise of massive cuts in taxes and duties. He did that. Therefore, the economy suffered a blow because not enough money was being collected. Bad decisions with respect to shift to organic farming overnight killed the agriculture industry. The Easter bombings of 2019 and COVID thereafter have also in some ways reduced the effect of the, uh, reduced the tourism industry. Remittances are down. People are unhappy with rising prices and lack of amenities. The Rajapaksha who came in with unprecedented landslide victory is today facing an impeachment and people are crying, go, gotta go. Maldives, a strategically important island chain, was a center of India out campaign just three years back. Today, under the Sole government, much of this has been done away with, yet China continues to firm in trouble. So you can see increasing unrest, internal and external pressures in our region. China is the spoiler. Yet Pakistan and Sri Lanka are on this verge of a civil war. Heads are rolling. Imran Khan was the first to go. The next time will tell us soon enough. Interestingly, this crisis has given India the must needed opportunity to regain its preeminent status that was encroached upon by China. 
India's position and initiatives with vaccine maitri, economic assistance, and the policy of neighborhood first enjoys ground support in all these countries. Chinese hegemony and interference in regional issues, though on the rise, is actually falling back onto China. The economic colonization, whether it is in Sri Lanka or Pakistan, political enslavement in Pakistan or Nepal, constant viewing and creating of unrest in Nepal, Bangladesh or Maldives. These have all turned back to bite China. The Wuhan virus and the Ukraine war have aggravated the crisis in the region. Yet, India is seen as a problem solver, a leader. From HCQs to medicines, wherein India has sent over free medicines to over 40 countries, over 175 million doses of vaccines to over 98 countries, active participation in the global supply chain, and now in addressing the consequences of the famine fears as a result of the Ukraine war and being able to supply wheat and rice to the world. This will throw India into direct confrontation with China that aspires to be number one and does not want India anywhere close by. India will need to be vigilant itself. Within, its, within us, we have states like Bengal, New Delhi, Delhi, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, all vying to be the freebie king and give more and more freebies. Exactly what happened in Sri Lanka. There is a fair amount of unrest going on in India, especially recently with respect to the hijab controversy and now the controversy is created by the attacks on the Hindu processions in the last few days. How will this play itself out? What will be the contours of the new world order? And who will be the world powers, the new world powers? Will India figure in one of them? So gentlemen, we do continue living in very interesting times. Please wait for my next video, which will be a greater detailed version of the same video which we are doing right now. And if you approve of this video, please do leave a like and comment. That immenses, immensely motivates me. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not already subscribed and press the bell icon to be notified. Feel free to share this video with your friends. And as always, I look forward to your suggestions and continued support. Till my next video, a detailed version on the Game of Thrones or the Throne of Thorns. Jai Hind.